Saturday, November 30th, 2019, 43 degrees Fahrenheit, that is 7 degrees Celsius. I just got off an F train at the Fort Hamilton Parkway subway station, and I'm going to do a walk of Windsor Ter Terrace today. The time is 1.58 p.m., according to that clock. This subway station is served by the F train and the G train. There's a Manhattan bound F train on the other side. So Windsor Terrace is a small neighborhood in Brooklyn, mostly residential. It's in the central park of the borough, uh, central part of the borough, not central park. Although it is bounded by Prospect Park on the eastern boundary, Park Slope on the northwest, and Greenwood Cemetery to the southwest. Also the neighborhood of Kensington. Boy, this turnstile is hard to move. Also, um, the Brooklyn neighborhood of Kensington is to the southeast. I think I'll get off at Greenwood Avenue. The neighborhood is shaped like a comma, like the punctuation mark. Okay, this is Greenwood Avenue and Prospect Avenue. There's also a overpass here which goes over the Prospect Expressway. The neighborhood itself is divided into two separate sections, the eastern side of the Prospect Expressway which is where I'm standing now and the western part. I think I'll focus more of my attention on the eastern part. But let's continue on Greenwood Avenue and check out some of this uh, neighborhood. So I'll tell you a little bit of history here. Before the Europeans settled at Windsor Terrace, it was inhabited by the Canarsie Indians. The land was in the far northwestern corner of the town of Flatbush. It was purchased as a farm by John Vanderbilt. And eventually following Vanderbilt's death, they were, um, the area was sold to William Bell, who subdivided the land into 47 building blocks. And then uh, Bell, he renamed this area called Windsor Terrace after a town in the same no after a town called Windsor in England so that's where Windsor Terrace comes from because it comes after Windsor in England but this neighborhood was always desirable due to its um, location at the northwestern corner of the town of Flatbush it was very close to the city of Brooklyn and eventually Prospect Park came to the area as well so it became more desirable that way. And also um, there were a lot of transportation options here as well. The Brooklyn streetcar came to the area and also the subway lines. 
when the subway lines came here, the rapid development came and row houses came to the area and it became more of a suburban neighborhood rather than a quiet town like the rest of the city. Okay, here's Sherman Street. So here's a big apartment building, different than the, um, the row houses that I just passed. And even here across the street. Or I should say on the same side of the street. It still has that quiet neighborhood feel. As you can see, most of the leaves here have fallen already. It's getting to be quite cold and windy, so many of the last holdouts have started dropping their leaves. It's said that the bravest trees will shed their leaves first. Are these pigeons eating dead tree leaves? Well, whatever uh, fancies their palate, I guess. I don't think dead tree leaves will, will be very appetizing to me. Anyway, here is Prospect Park Southwest and the eastern border of Windsor Terrace. Prospect Park was designed by the same people as Central Park, Vox and Olmsted. They designed Prospect Park after uh, Central Park. I won't be going to um, Prospect Park in this video though. What I'll do is I think I'll make my way back up to um, Prospect Avenue and then I'll take that all the way to um, maybe Prospect Park West or I'll see. The street grid is very confusing here at times because a lot of these streets they go in different angles and weird shapes and Prospect Avenue is one of them. It has a distinctive curve on its main street. Also Prospect Park isn't shaped uh, uniformly either. Prospect Park itself is bounded by Prospect Park West, Prospect Park Southwest, Parkside Avenue, Ocean Avenue, and Washington Avenue. So, Oh, and also Eastern Parkway. So it can get kind of confusing if you don't know the names of it. Like how are you supposed to know Parkside Avenue is the southeastern corner of Prospect Park unless you live here. And I think I'll go back this way. With Central Park, at least you have Central Park South, Central Park West, Central Park North. And it's not called Central Park East, but there's Fifth Avenue. Someone's playing catch here in the middle of the street. It's quiet enough on this block that they're able to do it. I don't see too many decorations up. Black Friday was yesterday. That's the day after Thanksgiving. But I think before these people put up the decorations, they have to rake up all these leaves though. That comes first. Okay. 
Well, there's some decorations here. Nice bow and some lights. Someone just left the bike here, locked with a crypto lock. I like to see what's up on the um, main street of Windsor Terrace. I was reading on the Wikipedia article that in 2015, the major supermarket in the area closed, the Key Food Supermarket, and there were many residents which were understandably upset over the situation. A food cooperative was, um, was uh, established by the neighborhood, and if people contributed to it, they're able to buy uh, produce and goods from that co-op. If you're not, then you're not allowed to. There's also a smaller supermarket that exists in the old Kifu location, so I guess that helps with that situation. Okay, I'm back at Prospect Avenue. Prospect Avenue and Reeve Place. Looks like there's some construction across the street. There's a JC Nail and Spa place here and the deck. Seems like an interesting coffee and sandwich place. It's quiet today in this neighborhood, definitely. Especially when it gets cold, a lot of people don't like to go out unless it's in the big city or they're coming here for vacation. That's what I've noticed anyway. People only like to come out when the weather gets a lot uh, warmer and it's not, it doesn't get dark as early. Here's Vanderbilt Street. I told you before the history, this neighborhood was owned by John Vanderbilt and there's a street named after him. Wow, there's a um, interesting elevation change here. I'm climbing up now. Perhaps that's why this area is called Windsor Terrace as well, because it's higher than uh, the other part of the neighborhood or other parts of Brooklyn. You can spot many uh, clues to Brooklyn's neighborhoods just by their street names or the hi their history. Such as Brooklyn Heights, it was higher on the coastline than the rest of Brooklyn. Bay Ridge, there was a ridge there. Midwood was a wooded area. Flatbush was a uh, bushy area with flatlands. trying to think of more. Oh, Bath Beach, there's a beach there, Coney Island. It was it's not an uh it's not an island anymore, but it used to be surrounded by water. So you can just um see some history there with the street names, the neighborhood names, I mean.
Okay, wow. I'm still continuing to climb. And there's a street here called Terrace Place. That tree still has some leaves on it, all yellow. This is definitely a very wide street. I like these brick homes on either side of the street here. I see it's very residential still. Yep, I can definitely see why this is called Windsor Terrace because this is a constant climb for at least like five, six blocks now. I like the little signs there. No pee is killing our lawn. So if you're a dog, don't pee on their lawn. Someone still has their Halloween decorations up? Wow. Okay. I think it's time to change out for some uh, Christmas lights and holiday decorations. Okay, I've approached 11th Avenue. These are really nice homes here across the street. Kind of oval in shape. Okay, here's the key food supermarket that used to be here. Now it's called Windsor Farms Marketplace. And part of the space which originally was key food. And now there's Walgreens Pharmacy. I can see why the neighborhood's the neighborhood was very upset with this uh, place losing its supermarket. There doesn't seem to be too much around here. But it's good, at least they have something now. Wow, this elevation is even steeper than before. These look to be evergreen trees. I don't think they'll ever shed their leaves. And now we got some more homes on the other side of the street that are red brick, oval shaped as well. Right. Over here, two family homes maybe, three family homes if uh, the lower level has a place. Oh wow. This is that one extreme. A lot of times when people need to get rid of their stuff and they don't feel like giving it away to um, the city for trash pickup, they'll just leave it out on the curb and whoever passes by will pick up books or whatever uh, stuff they leave behind. That way it's not thrown into a landfill. There's a saying here that, um, that says one person's trash is another person's treasure. Okay, here's a home inspection place. 
come all companies hardware supply company across the street there's also Benjamin Moore here so some signs of um, commercial businesses still a very residential area though Oh, well, there's a dentist's office here. I like this block a lot. Nice mix of architecture and very wide. Here's a bar. The Rhythm and... No, Rhythm L Booze, or maybe it's N Booze. If it's a different font, I don't realize or recognize but here's the menu what they serve oh it's rhythm and rhythm and booze the font type they chose and made the and look like an L although I admit that would be a cool name though someone asks you what your name is, you can say, my name's Rhythm L. Booze. Very smooth. Wow, this is a very cool neighbor, uh, block here, Fuller Place. I think I'll check it out just for a little bit. It's only a block anyway. These homes here are very, very unique. Haven't seen them, um, haven't seen this kind of design throughout the neighborhood until now. Looks like they're Doric columns, Greek columns. And the roofs are all a little bit different too. Across the street is different from over here. Looks like this person may have changed the property a little bit, but it's very cool nevertheless. But every single one still has the columns. And over here, there's no, um, it's not door columns anymore. I think these are ionic, if I'm not mistaken. They're just the plain ones. Or maybe I'm mixing them up. This um, facade over here, though, looks like it's in poor condition. Could need a new paint job and refurbish. Uh, refurbished exterior okay so that was Fuller Place and now this is Windsor Place let's see the name of the street named after the neighborhood Windsor Place is a little more plain on the color pal palette but I can tell the homes here are very sturdy. Very nice looking homes. Let me cross the street here. So I think I'll end this video at Prospect Park at the traffic circle. Oh, here's the uh, subway entrance, 15th Street Prospect Park. It is unusual to have a subway entrance right next to a residential block. But here it is. 
in my experiences walking throughout New York City, it isn't that common to have the subway exit pour out onto a residential street. Most of them have um, delis and groceries and business activity around the subway station. Okay, now this uh, business to the right of me or just past the Park Slope Performing Arts. They're giving reference to the neighborhood that's right above this one. But I don't think it's Park Slope just yet. This is still Windsor Terrace until I get to the traffic circle. You see this business got it right, Terrace Bagels Cafe. But there's a lot of commercial activity here. Krupa, Grocery, The Sicilian, Brooklyn, New York, Windsor Shoes 2, WST. Here's Park West Vision. Launder Center. Like the name there. And a meat market. Pharrell's Bar and Grill established 1913. It's incredible this place has been here this long. Here is 16th Street. I see some businesses here to the side. So I'm going to go and check them out. Here's a place called Black Bear. It's up for rent. And this place, East Wind Snack Shop, I've actually tried before. After coming out of Prospect Park, you can see they have the article, Memories of Chinatown Gone By, and it's a neighborhood favorite. Their uh, buns are very good, and the dumplings are great. The prices are very reasonable, too. Here's a pie shop. Ooh, double pies. Very cool. Okay, I'm at the boundary of Windsor Terrace with Park Slope and Prospect Park across the street here and then end the video. And here's a wartime monument. Good way to end the video. But anyway, if you enjoy this, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below, like this video, and I'll see you next time after getting away from all these birds. I'll see you all next time. Take care.